got love for you, man. You know what, what are we talking about? You know, I'm not here to start any trouble. I'm only going to say nice things about you from now on. I think you're handsome, and I think you're a wonderful host. I'm fat and I'm overweight. Just don't say anything silly. I was waiting for you to say that. I'm not laughing about it. You think this is funny? I take this serious. You know, I don't want y'all to take anything out of context that I'm saying. He's very funny. He likes to joke around a lot. As a personality and as an entertainer, yes. This is going to be really quick. I'm not taking any questions. Go ahead and get comfortable. I'm going to talk for a little bit. You're listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Cabbie Presents podcast. How are your holidays going? Anyone else gained 15 pounds since the beginning of December? I feel like I'm on my own here. But there might be one guy just killing the chocolate and the eggnog at the Christmas parties. Shout out to Will Ferrell and Adam McKay for Anchorman 2. I laughed all the way through that movie and the climax is amazing. I won't spoil it for you, uh, for those who haven't seen it yet, but for those who have, you know it's pretty awesome. Also, overdue shout out to that WestJet commercial where they give uh, Christmas presents to the passengers as they land in Calgary. Brilliant stuff from Studio M in Toronto. It's a great commercial. I don't ever shout out commercials, but that one is dope and it's from some homegrown cats, so shout out to you. Thank you to the weekly subscribers and those enjoying the My Guy Monday podcast. I have a lot of fun with those and uh, the guests. uh, We just have like random off-the-wall conversations, some relating to sports, most relating to other things. If you have some time, give us a little comment on iTunes under Cabby Presents. My next guest is an old friend, one of the great personalities in a sport that doesn't celebrate individualism the way that it should. He's back in Chicago with his former team, and joins me on the phone right now. If it's going to be an interview, I'm going to conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions, ask myself the questions, then give y'all the answers. The last time I spoke to this man, it was in the summer of 2013. I was in the glorious province of Alberta, and my dude was prepping for either a birthday party or a party for one of his homies and extended the invitation which I appreciated but I made the strategic error to stay at the Calgary Stampede as opposed to joining the regalia which would have happened or which did happen in Lethbridge Alberta and the man on the line is one of my favorite interviews ever he goes by the name of Christopher Stieg welcome back to the Cabbie Presents podcast yeah, it's good to be back, and again, thanks for coming. Hey, did I, um, um yeah, no, I didn't come. I, 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 no, I know, thanks for, that, that was a big error on your part. I can imagine. See, but, like, as we, as we spoke before, the water isn't necessarily clean in Lethbridge, if you know what I mean. Well, you know, you drink it anyways. <laughs> my friend, uh, my friend Brendan, he used to say his mom, one of his, his mom's, uh, proverbs was like, Sometimes when you're thirsty, sometimes you'll drink dirty water. And um, I was, <laughs> I was quite thirsty that opening weekend of the Calgary Stampede, as I am every friggin' time I go there because it's um, there's a lot to drink there. There's just a lot of activity in um, at that time. Uh, what is the um, what's the most what's the wildest party that you've gone to? Like as far as like either the location of the party, like whether it's in an airport hangar or in a barn or at a you know in a in a parking garage or somebody's like ridiculous house like what's the wildest party you went to you've been to uh actually it was this past summer it was me and my two brothers and my five best friends we went to uh the world's biggest house music festival in belgium it's called tomorrowland oh my gosh uh, that was uh the one of the the best experiences of my life and the craziest party um so once you touch down in Belgium, do you remember the next 48 hours? Vaguely. Vaguely, <laughs> I do. So, I, I mean, I, I guess it was the best party, but... No, I, uh, you know, we made a trip of it. We went to uh, Amsterdam, too, and uh, we went to Spain, and uh, we got to see different, you know, parts, and uh, we ended it in Belgium. So, that was... Uh, it was a, a trip to remember with, like I said, my brothers and 
and my best friends. So wait, eight dudes. Yeah. That's that's a us. that's a squad. Like that's a team and some bench players. Yeah, exactly. So if uh you know, everyone paced themselves, some guys wanted to go do something one night, other guys didn't have to. So it was actually it was a perfect amount of guys and we had we had a ton of fun. Now, is it um when you travel with that many dudes, okay, so who how many wolves did you have? And by wolves I mean there's always like you always have a friend or a couple friends that are great openers where they go meet new people and you can send them out and then they'll open up open it up for the rest of the group. We call those in my crew, we call those the wolves. How many wolves do you have in your squad? Uh there's a few wolves, you know, there's uh, <laughs> there's a few of them. Uh couple guys that like to talk. I think my brother is one of them. Um but you know, when you're when you're over there, everyone was so friendly, and you could talk to anyone. And uh, especially at that the festival, there's 214 countries represented, so you got to meet people from all over the world. And uh, it was uh, it was a, actually it was an incredible time. Did you guys? Is it one of those festivals where people like sleep on the grounds, like they get like tents and stuff in this giant well, park or like a forest? They call something Dreamville there, so I think more of the young crowd stays in. Uh, they have tents set up for all the people there, and uh, they pay a little extra to go to a, a Dreamville, it's called. And uh, But for me and my friends, we, we just went in and out. Of, so we stayed in Brussels every night. Um, so we just carred back and forth from the festival to Brussels. I'm getting a little too old to be tenting and sleeping on the ground. Uh, you're also too rich um, to, be, <laughs> uh, to, be, to be sleeping on the ground like, like it's yeah. a camp. Those are in my younger days. I, uh, <laughs> I could crash right next to the campfire, but not anymore. <laughs> so wait, how many days was this festival? Like two days or three days? It was three days, and all the world's biggest DJs were there. You got to see Tiesto and get uh, Nicky Romero, Nervo, Avicii, you could, anyone you could name, Armin Van Buren. All the biggest uh, DJs were there. I mean, Slash was there. playing. Slash from the gu- Guns N' Roses? Yeah, he was there playing his guitar with Chucky. Uh, one of the Dutch DJs, Chuck, he was there, and he had Slash on, and they ripped it for uh, quite a while. So it was, uh, it was it was awesome. It was just so cool. As a fan of EDM, Chris, like, how do you feel about the DJs playing like pre-recorded sets off their MacBooks? Because they're not actually like mixing records, and they're not I, actually I, like. I think there's. I think it depends on. I mean, you talk to some of them, and they talk about how they do mix-ups or the mash-ups, and they change up, you know, the way they feel the crowd going. And um, but you know what? They they put the music together, and <laughs> I mean, that's that's something in itself. You know how how they find the the beats and the way the songs go and the the flow of the songs is uh, is great. You know, it's not like obviously country music or <laughs> anything else where the people got to go up there and sing and perform that way but they're still up there doing their job and and getting the crowd going that's a that's a pretty dope okay and and last question about your euro trip uh when you went to spain did you go to madrid or barca uh we were in ibiza oh my god dude so how are you like i came back alive which is uh honestly your 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 liver still hates you from like your body is still like when you (laughs) when you get up in the morning do you cough (laughs) it's like there's still some some kind of poison radiation in your body from those seven, eight, ten days that you're in Europe. Well, you know, I, well, I was 16, but we... 16 uh, days in Europe? Oh, my gosh, dude. Yeah, but it was just, it was a, you know, a trip that with me and my friends and brothers that you probably will never be able to do again. You know, we're getting older and guys are getting married now, and it was something that we all wanted to do. Uh, but, you know, you paced yourself. I know... I know my brother definitely didn't pace himself. He was sleeping <laughs> on his stomach because his kidneys hurt a little too much. <laughs> Which brother? I met I met both of them uh, yeah, the day you guys won the Stanley Cup in 2010. Yeah, it was Bryce. Bryce, the okay. He, he, the youngest. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, now, uh, the reason I brought up um, what's like the craziest party you went to is because I was, um, I saw on a blog yesterday, I think it was Sports Grid, that your former boss... From the Florida Panthers, uh, Vincent Viola. Is that, am I saying his name right? Viola or is it Vi- Viola? Yeah, I, I don't. It was yeah, Viola or Viola. I don't know. I've heard it both ways. Um, he's selling his Manhattan mansion 
for a hundred and fourteen million dollars. That's a pretty penny. Yeah, that's that's disgusting. Like I, so I, it's like nineteen rooms. There's a pool. There's a three story patio. I'm like clicking through the photo gallery. Everything is opulent. It's marble and gold and like uh, statues from all over the world. I'm just like this is. And there's like a. This seems like there's like a marble bathtub and just in the middle of this room. I'm like this is just disgusting. Have you been there? And have you? And if if not, have you been to his place in Florida? No, I I, I didn't actually get to go. I was only there for. Uh, you know, probably three weeks from the time he was there. Uh, he took over the team during the season. Uh, but I know Tim Thomas had gone there. Uh, he flew Timmy down on a private plane, I guess. And uh, in the, I think right before, you know, I don't know, before they were going to sign the deal. And, and Timmy talked about how, how crazy his place was. So I can only imagine, judging by the dollars that... Uh, the house goes for yeah 114 million that's just like that's just disgusting dude like yeah, i and crazy. like did he ever oh so yeah so he just took over the team three weeks before you were traded to chicago yeah yeah so uh, I, I i didn't I, I never really got to know him just got to say hi to him a couple times and uh hi to his kid i know his kids uh really the hockey fan who who wanted to uh purchase the team so i think uh you know, uh, I, his kid was around more more than anyone else. Now, since um, being back in Chicago, I saw the video that the Blackhawks made with the Welcome Back Cotter, and it was cool just seeing you, you know, just like er- seeing everybody's genuine reaction to seeing you back in, in Chicago. And you are, uh, you're such a glue guy. Like, you're, you add uh, levity to a room and uh, I mean, you're you're a great talent, and just you're just like you're just like a dude. Um, How is it? Who are you most excited to to like see and crack jokes with and prank and all that kind of stuff? Well, you're always. It, it was great to see everyone. Like I said, I still hang out with Thieves and and Dunks and those guys in the summertime, so I see them. Okay, so that's uh, that's Brent. That, sorry, that's Brent Seabrook and uh, Duncan yeah, Keith. Duncan Keith, sorry, and. Uh, you know, Corey Crawford, I hadn't seen him. Me and him were really close when we played in the minors together. And uh, Then, obviously, I was traded, so I didn't get to talk to him as much and to see the success he had. I, you know, it was good to see him and congratulate him on all that. And, and Bickle and and all the guys, you know, Kane or Taser. Taser's always the guy you love to come back and bug because he gets so riled up. <laughs> so, yeah. He doesn't have much of a sense of humor. Like, that dude, I feel well, like... He does, he does but... You, you know, it's it's when it's going in the other direction. When it's coming at him, he doesn't have a sense. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, he can't take shots that well. No, but that's that's what's great about Taser. So it it, it gets everyone else, you know, laughing and joking. I was um I had Kevin Weeks on the podcast recently, and I asked him about like uh, to the public, professional athletes seem like alpha males, like certainly in their sport to achieve. Uh, the the level that they're at, it's, I don't know. There's maybe like fifteen hundred or two thousand professional athletes in the four major sports. There's only like two thousand of you dudes in uh, in North America, but and and to the public, you guys seem like alphas. But within the team, not everybody is an alpha. Not everybody is like is like the dude's dude. So the question to you is, who's the most sensitive guy on your team? Well, I, I just named him. It's Doctor Taser. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything he's particularly sensitive about like is it his wardrobe is it his choice of music is it like does he have um uh any kind of uh i don't know what what is is he, is he sensitive about his hairline or the fact that he can't grow a beard what is well, it? it it is receding a little bit to his yeah, hairline. That dude, is that you dude know? even 25 yet he yeah he is 25 now but uh it looks like it is drawn back a bit <laughs> you know, I don't want to chirp too much because I know Karma's going to come and kick me in the butt here because I know my hairline isn't quite where it used to be. <laughs> but uh, I, I definitely know it's... I'm pretty sure it's a little lower than Taser's. And, <laughs> and I'm, I am two years older than him. So. But you can grow the locks, though. Do you still have the locks? I haven't seen you in a while. You no, st- it's, it's all chopped off. What? Why, dude? Well, I thought this year I had uh, a few tough years with injuries and and surgeries so i thought i'd change up my luck a little bit 
And you think your hair, dude? Solomon lost his power. I know. I know. Or Samson, and not Solomon. Samson. Samson. Yeah. No, I, I, and I actually, uh, my dad's girlfriend told me that right when I chopped off my hair. That's so. You, you know what's amazing I, about what you just said? My dad's girlfriend. Yeah. Well, his. Uh, they, 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 I guess you could qualify her as his wife. They've been together long enough. But still, like it's it's awesome that it's like my dad's girlfriend. <laughs> It's a great, uh, well, you know, you know, with the divorce rates nowadays, and yeah, you know, yeah, things don't work out all the time. On my dad's girlfriend. <laughs> so, uh, okay, but you never say specifically what it is about Taze that he's so sensitive about. Like I said, just just anything and everything you can pretty much get him on. It's, um, I don't like. I'm not going to chirp him about his hairline unless he listens to this podcast. I don't think he does. I've tried to get uh, him on, and he. I don't think he even knows. I think he asked me once what a podcast was. I'm like, so it's just a conversation. But I, I don't I'm think he was surprised he went to college because he doesn't know as much as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude! Total side note. Um, as a as a legit the legit creeper that I am. I saw this clip on YouTube with one of the your the Chicago ice girls. And one of the ice girls was just cleaning out the ice or like the, the snow that collects in the um the goalie's crease and it was just like the net cam cam. Dude. <laughs> what is the rule about those girls? Like are you guys even allowed to say hello to them? Or if they if you're at a restaurant and they come in, do one of your groups have to leave? Like is that the rule with those girls? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think they, you know, I, I don't think they're allowed to be around any of the guys. It, probably, yeah, I think it's in the contract they sign. I'm not really too certain, but uh, you never do run into anyone really um, around town, but I'm pretty sure that there is something like that. Are there any girls r remaining from your era, the 2010 era? I don't know. I haven't... Uh, oh, yeah, you guys um, have been on the road the whole time since you've yeah, been there, right? I've, I've been home at a few games, but I haven't seen really any of the, you know, the old crew, the uh, the Ice Girls, but I, I have no idea. Who had your locker when you returned to Chicago? Uh, Marion Hosa. Oh, so you can't... Yeah. So, like, so where... Now, who's... Now, when you returned, whose locker did you take from, like, the 2010 era? I'm thinking John Madden. I'm oh, sure okay. John Madden, I think I know what you're saying. You kind of sit a few stalls down from Patrick Sharp, right? To his left? Yeah, but Sharp changed stalls too. They all they all seem to have changed stalls except for Kaner. I think <laughs> Kane, Kane's still in the same one, but and Taze, but everyone else host changed and uh Sharpie's not where he used to be either. I remember um when we hung out and I, I I'm pretty sure I brought this story up on the the first time you were on the podcast. Um how you said how generous Marion Hosa was and how like he's one of those dudes that just slaps down his credit card and takes care of the boys like several times a year. Has someone replaced him as that guy being as though you guys have been on the road for uh, a few weeks since you've been, or you've been with the team for a few weeks or is he still that guy? Oh, he's still that guy. He's uh he's a generous guy. Like a, like you're saying, that I said a while ago, he's pretty much, you know, those years when he wasn't winning the Stanley Cup and then he came to Chicago, that year was really for Marion. You know, he's that he deserved that so much after going through what he went through. You know, two Stanley Cup finals on the opposite teams and not being able to win it. Um, he's he's really you know, and all the criticism he went through for changing teams and then going to Chicago, everything. He, he's the nicest guy, and everything that happens to him is so well deserved. And you know, he's still picking up dinners and. And doing stuff like that for everyone, so you know you can't say enough good things about Marion. Nice. I, I I hope to meet him someday, just to be a friggin' leech, like the douche that I am. Um. So how, okay, I've been hearing a lot about this year about the code, and it's mostly for like the stuff on the ice, like whether, like when is the right time to hit a guy or when it's too late because he turns. And then, like, a lot of dudes have just been getting... I mean, I'm sure it's happened forever. Dudes getting, like, run, like, face first into the boards and stuff. But when when the code applies to off-the-ice stuff, like, when do you know, Chris, personally, when it's like, all right, you know what, I'm going to treat the boys this time or I'm going to make the plan this time? Like, how does the code work for you? Now, you've rejoined the team, so you're not there from day one, but how do you know where to pick your... choose your spots? I think there's... Uh... You always know when you should pick your spot, uh, especially guys after signing new contracts. 
generally take the team out for a team dinner or ah, something okay, like that. Ah, okay, okay, okay. That's, that's generally an unwritten rule, you know, in Florida. Um, when I got my new contract last year, you take the team out for dinner. and um, A lot of the older guys who've been around a while, they'll take the team out. So it's kind of you pick your spot and you pick your time on the road. Maybe it's, you know, in Carolina there's a great place that, um, I like to go to, so maybe that'll be the place that I buy everyone dinner or, or someone likes it someone uh, in, in another city. So that'll be, you know, on anyone's judgment, but, you know, maybe once a year there'll be someone step up and buy a team dinner. Now, uh, Hosa is one of the big earners on your team. In other teams that, on other teams that you've played for, has the guy that's made the most money been the most generous? Like, has there been another guy like Hosa? Or have you seen on other teams like, the two, one or two dudes that have like the fattest contracts are the guys with the shortest arms when the bill comes. Well, Brian Campbell, the shortest arms I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 that hasn't bought a team dinner in the three years I was there. Oh my, so wait, that's Chicago and Florida? Florida. Oh, I've been with him for four and a, yeah, five years I played with him. Five years. <laughs> he hasn't bought one team dinner in five years. <laughs> You better let him know that. Too. I will. Like I will let him know. I think. I think I have. Uh, I think I still have his number. That's the worst reputation to have. Like for dudes, it's either it's either you're if you're a bad lover or you're cheap. I don't know which one is the is the worst reputation to hear about yourself. I almost think mm, cheap. Cheap. Yeah, you think cheap is worse than being a bad lover? I don't. It's so close, man. I don't know. I'm gonna go cheap right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, total, this is a, a random side note. Uh, I don't know if you saw this on Ellen. Um, Andrew McCutcheon, the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, he proposed to his longtime girlfriend Maria on the show. This happened like last week or something like that. When uh, Have you seen proposals at your hockey games, like fans proposing during an intermission or a TV timeout? I, I guess I, not I an intermission because you're in the... In Rockford when I played in, with Rockford, the Ice Hogs. Um, I remember there was one there. I've seen one at a basketball game at a Miami Heat game before, and I just heard that there was one at a, a Bulls game actually just recently too. So, how do you re- it, how do you react when you see that or when you when you hear about it? Do I you- get awkward. I get really awkward, you know, watching it. Um, those kind of things kind of weird me out. I know it's uh, it's a special time for the people, but kind of watching it, kind of awkward to me how do your how do your teammates react i think when you're watching i remember the one in rockford i was like what the heck are they doing getting pro- you know at an ice hogs game <laughs> you know it's not even a professional game it's uh, or it's not even like in the big leagues it's like the minor league uh yeah and you know what i mean it was special to them which yes great. yes this it's, that is I true mean, you're just like what i think we're all looking at each other like what's going on here uh would you ever propose in a public place if you had to no would you ever so uh it's either in your house or on a vacation or not that you've thought about I don't know what you're I mean dudes it's kind of like I don't know I don't I've never heard of a dude who had like a really cool plan it's kind of something that they just sort of do at the time that's like that's convenient whatever I've never heard anybody have like this like amazing Cause dudes, yeah. I don't know if we're wired I mean, that you, way. You saw the Kanye plan, you know. Ah, uh, see, okay, plan. yeah, that was elaborate. Like renting out a stadium yeah. and having a—he had like a thirty-piece orchestra or a fifty-piece orchestra playing. Apparently, he wanted to fly Katy Perry in to sing, but uh, she declined. It was Katy Perry or some other uh, pop star? Yeah, I mean Kanye, but Kanye's Kanye, right? I mean, it's a little annoying now. <laughs> You're not. I used, to, I, I used to like him, you know, on his old record when he stopped. He wasn't using all that electric and. Oh, you don't like the uh, you don't like the auto tune. No, nah, it's awful. You know, not, his old his old stuff was great. So you weren't into like 808s and heartbreaks that that no. whole album where it was all no, auto tune and terrible. Heartbreak was you know. I kind of like heartbreaks. I like I like the song amazing and I like the song paranoid. <sighs> I don't know. I just I, I just like the the sound of it and like I don't know if you bought his his most recent album Jesus, but he's got a song called. Blood on the Leaves, which is yeah. just, it's just so sinister. The beat is just so heavy, Chris. Do you, do you know that song? No, I, I haven't. I haven't even, I, I'm, not, I'm not even giving his new stuff a A listen? Try. Really? No, because I, I was so disappointed in his old, you know, in his 
and heartbreak in the other one and you know it's just, just youtube that one just youtube that one blood on the All leaves right. and like and the beat is like i don't know what you listen to before the game or if you have your ipod in i feel like you're the dude that walks around and cracks jokes or like you're you keep the room light i feel like that's what you i have no idea how you are with the guys but i feel like that's that's the role that you play however if you are an ipod listening dude i'm not an ipod <laughs> okay <laughs> who runs the ipod in the room uh here it's been duncan keith yeah I, is that country music all that. all day long i'm totally prejudging him he's he's heavy metal oh uh, my gosh before a game and country in the morning but i i'm a huge country fan too countries you know that's that's actually always been my favorite uh i was gonna a, a couple more things i was going to um we're planning a bachelor party for one of my boys. We call him the president. And one of the options was Nashville. And I've heard nothing but great things about Nashville. We're not going. Unfortunately, I got, I got uh, ruled out or overruled. But Nashville, as a, as a party city, as a country music place, your thoughts? Oh, Nashville's awesome. There, you got Broadway where you have probably 30 to 40 different uh, little bars with uh, live music constantly going on from noon till, you know, two in the morning every day and night. So uh, you, you get people actually that come from all over the world and they sing and they pay to sing in these bars uh, for an hour or two and hope that there's a scout there that recognizes Actually, like it's like karaoke st style? Well, it, it is, yeah. But it, they're they're all you know a lot of the people in there are very talented. In some places, you know, when they don't have people flying in to sing at their bars, they have you know their regulars come on and sing too. But um, but yeah, it is karaoke style or, or not. Well, I mean, there's no lyrics in front of them or anything, but it, it is that you know type of stuff. It's like it's like a, like a showcase almost. Yeah, and you and some people you know you go in there and you pay them to play a song you want to hear and. But you know it's all country, and it, it's a great time. It really is. When you're when you're at those spots, do you sing loudly with the music? Like when you recognize oh, the song? Very loud. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Your uh, your boy um, Justin Bieber is retiring. Apparently, he is. Yeah, he said he's. But it, I think it's just a, a a joke or like a, one of his pranks. But he said that he's retiring after his music, after his latest record drops. He's just gonna take a break um, for a little time, a little bit he's of time. He's taking a break or he's retiring. Well, he said he's he said I'm retiring, and then he said I'm taking a break. So I don't know what that really means to a 19 year old kid or 20 year old kid, however old, however old he is. Um, yeah, I I don't know. It's you know. I, 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 he's hit or miss for me. Actually? Yeah, you know, I respect he's Canadian and everything, but you just <laughs> hope that, you know, I mean, when you make that much money and you're in the spotlight that much as a kid, you can't really put yourself in his shoes because you don't really know what it's like. No, I feel like it's impossible to be normal when yeah, you're like a millionaire at 15 and you can buy gosh. anything you want and fly your boys anywhere in the world that you're going and just hang out. Like, it's it's got to be impossible to be normal. No, exactly. So yeah, it's hard to judge someone on that. But as for his music, I mean, I'm not really that big of a fan of Bieber. I mean, he is very talented, though. Can you sing any of his songs? The way that, or what is it? As long as you love me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Isn't that like one of his you first? You know, he's got one? the odd good song where I'll, I'll I like. He does have the odd good one. Uh, he's got one recently. Uh, who was on it? Either Future or. I think maybe Chance the Rapper. I can't remember. My iPod's not in front of me. But it's like a half-decent one. I remember like a couple years ago, like when I, I'll just take it back to the Stampede. When I do these, my, my boy DA, Dave Wilder, um, he throws these Stampede pub crawls. And I always make the playlist for the pub crawl. And I make it, I, I, the, the songs that I pick, I always make it very danceable and very singable. Because at any party, if the girls are partying, the dudes will want to party. And if the girls are singing, the dudes will want to get in there. So I, uh, I often make two playlists, like one for the girls, where it's like the super pop, mu pop music. It's the Katy Perry's, the Rihanna's, the Bieber's. You know, I might even put a Gaga's. Oh, no, like Beyonce or whatever. Um, but I did put the one song that I, I was kind of like vibing to, and I'm going to admit this as a grown man, was when he did Boyfriend. That one, that one had like a beat that I could, I could rock with. And like just watching girls sing... I'm not sure. Girls sing and dance. I'm not sure if there's a... 
I don't know, a better place to be. When they can do it well, not like sloppy, like at 2.30 in the morning, because that's just like hairs to the side and it's kind of wet. But if it's like if it's like 10.30 or 11, yeah, I'm vibing with that. Well, I'm glad that that song gets uh, you and your girls going. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's an okay song. I still like As Long As You Love Me Better. <laughs> <laughs> last, last question. If you seriously pr- pursued music, Chris Versteeg, Mm-hmm. After say you're say you're 37 years old, and you love country music, and the f- past few years of your hockey life, you've just been writing. You've been notebooks full of songs and verses and hooks and bridges. Do you think anybody would take you seriously as an artist? <laughs> no, no chance. Would you have to? <laughs> but if you if you did reinvent yourself in this way, because a lot of people once their first career is over, they have to like reinvent themselves into something else. Uh, would you go by a stage name? Would you just be known as maybe just Steger? I'd just be known as Chris. Just Chris. <laughs> just not Chris. Steg, not not Chris for Steg, Just Chris. Just Chris. You know, like Cher, Madonna. <laughs> Do you feel, would, simple for my people. Would you? Uh, I like that. Uh, simple for my people. I like that. Would country music be the lane that you that you run in? No, no, nope, because I can't sing at all. You know, I know lyrics and everything. But you but like to sing. I love to sing. You know, I I want to be a DJ. I've actually called up and I was going to learn it uh, during the lockout. I was going to start. Uh, I had to buy the equipment, which I never got around to, but. All you need is a MacBook and, or maybe like two MacBook. Oh no, I think just one MacBook. I just want to learn how to make, you know, the the sounds that they make and the beats, you know, and how they can do different things with different stuff. I was always, you know, really interested in that. I think you need, I think there's Serratos, I think is the, I've had DJs on the podcast and like, and I'm really fascinated about how they can move a crowd and. How yeah. like how many chicks that DJs get versus like personal trainers? I asked this one dude that, and he laughed. He says, "Oh, I don't know. That's close." But he gave it up to personal trainers. Um, I doubt it. You think DJs more than personal trainers? For sure. Oh, not, not even close. See, I, it's a toss up, man. Because personal trainers they go body to body with their clients. Like, they're the clients. The girls are in their Lululemon pants and they're like, you know, their Nike tops and you know they're sweating and you know it's like. They are making them, helping them to become better versions of themselves. Not better, maybe fitter versions of themselves. And then just like the pheromones are just like, you know, after a good that hour. Takes, just, that takes months, though. Yes, you're right. You know? You're right. DJs are every night. That's true. You make a good point. It's a good argument to be had. In fact, I'm going to have this argument more often. Um, <laughs> well, I, oh, the D, I mean, I'd have, to, I'd have to be a DJ for sure. I, You know, I'll just... I, I got no vocal abilities. Well, let's make it happen. Maybe we should do. Maybe we should write a. I should write a bit. And I don't know when you guys. Oh, you guys were just in Toronto, yeah. Yeah, we just were. I don't know if you guys come back, but maybe in the summertime. Uh, there's a bunch of DV, DJs here in TO. So if you're ever, I know when you the summer you stay in Alberta and you you don't really travel that much. But if you are in T, TO and you do I'll come be out in Toronto, yeah, and you do come out to. Uh, uh, my annual summer party, then we'll set something up where you can get a few hours on a turntable or a mixer and we'll make it happen. Smash some stuff up. Right? Yes. Yes, we will. Christopher Stieg of the Chicago Blackhawks. Are you on Twitter yet? No. Instagram? I don't like social media. That's People dis- are mean. They are. They are. They are very mean. It is a it is a volcano of hatred on, <laughs> That's uh, all it is. on Twitter. There are some people that show love, but there's a... Those, those but love, love doesn't really come until like something bad happens, you know. It just seems like on 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 Twitter a lot of the time is it's not enough love, you know. It's always hating on someone or jealous about someone. There's got to be more love on Twitter and in social media. I don't know how we change that, but people just have to be happier about themselves and um, and not worry about other people's flaws yeah. or faults, you know. Just be happy for who they are and and appreciate what other people do to, you know, help them and, you know, make this world a better place. I like how this one ended. If uh, if we were here in person, I would give you a hug, a lo- like a I long... I hug you too right now, but I'm serious. <laughs> I, I believe know? it. I, be- I know you're genuine. I believe it. Um, Social media, man. Well, if if it changes, if the landscape and the temperament of social media changes where people are happier and certainly nicer 
then... I mean, we- it doesn't matter. I mean, in the end, if, they're, if they hate me, which a lot of people do, <laughs> it's going to happen. It, it's fine, you know? And I'm not worried about that. It's just when you're on there, you know, you want to you want to say, you know, you want to be on there and be yourself. And sometimes I can't be myself too much, obviously, when uh, everything you say is looked upon, right? Of course, so it's it, examined, it, it's yeah. It's tough to be yourself at times. And uh, a lot of times when guys be themselves, it's really negatively looked upon. And and then a lot of hate starts happening, and I don't, I don't need that hate. Well, from Toronto, from a fat reporter, from one of your dudes... Christopher Stieg, I'm sending you love, my friend. Well, I'm sending you it back. Thank you, sir. Have a great holiday, and um, I will uh, definitely see you in the new year. And when you get to T.O., we'll smash some records. All right, sounds good. Thanks for being on the podcast, my dude. Later, bud. Thank you for listening to Cabbie Presents, the podcast.